Hey folks, in this video I'm going to be doing a total deep dive into GDScript callables. Uh, these are a new thing in Godot 4 and they are kind of ubiquitous now, so they're very good to know front and back. Um, another name for them, kind of in the general programming sphere, is first class functions. So if you need to learn more after this tutorial, you can look this up. Besides that, we'll go into Lambda functions, which are also known as anonymous functions in the general programming sphere, as well as some practical scenarios at the end, particularly with signals, which are another ubiquitous thing in Godot. So if you're trying to learn Godot and GDScript, this is a great tutorial for you. So the first example uh, that I want to show you is something that you might already be familiar with. It's just regular functions. So I've created this function here. It's called create greeting. It takes in a person name and it's going to return a string where it's just hello and then the person's name and then an exclamation mark. So the greeting, so to speak. I've already uh, set this up here where I call my function that I made, create greeting. I pass in a string. Uh, in this case, I just put Jim in and then I print it out. So as you can see, I was testing this out a little bit ago. Let's get rid of that and uh, try this again. And we can see this says, hello, Jim. Now, in case this isn't immediately obvious, we don't have to actually put this into a temporary variable. We can actually just print the output of the function directly. So I'll just do this. I'll pass in another name. Let's do Sue. And then we'll stop this and uh, run that. And we can see this says, hello, Sue. Now, what if instead of actually calling this function by putting these parentheses here and then passing in a variable, we just typed in the function name and printed that out? So I'm going to do that. Run this. And we can see it prints out this weird thing. So what is this? So this is a callable. And what we're printing out here is not a string but a callable. If we were to call the function, call the callable, we would put parentheses and then in parentheses, we could pass in our arguments, but we're not calling the callable because we're not typing in the parentheses. We're just printing out the callable itself. And I can prove that this is a callable by um, typing in this statement here, which will return a Boolean in Godot. So we're just checking if this is a callable, this will return true. If this is a callable, run this, and as we can see, this returns true. And callables in Godot are just like any other object in Godot. Like for example, like a vector three, let's say a uh, node 3D. You'll notice that it's highlighting these green just like it highlights a callable green. And that's because a callable is an object in Godot. And that's what the term first class functions means, is that Functions are just objects in Godot, just like anything else, just like a vector three or a string or a node 3D. And so what that means is, is that like other objects, we can assign our functions to variables. So we can say var x is equal to create greedy. No parentheses. And what this is, is we're basically just taking our callable object and we're assigning it to this other variable name. And then so if I were to replace this, if X is callable, run that, it returns true. And then if I were to print X, it's gonna return this same thing with the original function being create greedy. And so the way that callables work in Godot is that normally if you want to call a callable, you actually have to call this call function, which I know is a mouthful. But if I were to press call and then put a variable name here, I'll put Blargus, then this is basically going to do the exact same thing. Hello, Blargus. The reason that we don't have to do it for create greeting, we don't have to say create greeting dot call Jim is because we defined it up here as just a regular old function in Godot. And so Godot has some kind of helper syntactic sugar to make this look like regular functions, but this is a callable and this works if we just type in dot call, because again, this create greeting function is a callable. So for all these, we can say dot call, dot call, dot call, and we'll run that and everything works exactly the same. 
So why is all this important? So you actually almost never see a situation like this. Like this is kind of a silly thing to do, just assigning a function to another variable. But where callables really come in handy is with functions that take other functions as arguments. So this is where things get a little bit more complicated. Now bear with me. So I'm gonna create another function and I'm going to call it get function runtime. It's going to take in a callable, give it a type annotation here. And then what all it's going to do is it's going to declare a variable start time. That's going to be time dot get ticks milliseconds. We're going to call the callable. So we'll say callable dot call. Uh, this is going to require a no argument function as the callable. So we're not going to pass in any arguments. We're just going to call this call which this will become more clear in a little bit. But for now, let's move on. So we'll say end time equals time dot get ticks uh, milliseconds. And then we'll just return end time minus start time. And to test this out, I'm just gonna make one more function. I'm just gonna call it count to big number. It's gonna take no arguments. And I'm just gonna initialize a count variable. Whoops. And then we'll go for i in range. We'll do uh, 10 million. Oops. Can't type. Um, and we'll uh, say count plus equals one. And then I'm going to return count. So now we want to profile how long this function actually takes. We can use this function that we created to do that. So in our ready function, just delete all this other stuff. We can call our count to big number directly. Let's just do that first, just to show you guys. Oh, actually, here, let's let's print the result so we so we know how long this takes. So uh, I'll run this, and yeah. Didn't take that long. In fact, let's uh, let's make this 100 million just to make it take a little bit longer. Run this. It's running. It's running. It's running. Okay, and it returned. So that's a pretty good number. But we want to see exactly how long this takes. Instead of calling this directly, we can put it in this get function runtime function. So uh, let's let's put this in a variable just to make this less confusing. So I'll say runtime equals get function runtime. And then we're going to pass in count to big number as the function that it's going to profile. And then let's just print runtime. So it's running. And look at that, it took 2500 milliseconds. So this is a reasonable example of like a pretty good use case of callables. As you can see, like this is pretty useful. Like I can totally see many scenarios where I would want to see how long a function is taking to run. Obviously we have the Godot profiler, but this is kind of like a homemade version of that, that just gives you quick and dirty results. If you just want to see quickly how long a function is running, you can pass it through this and you can pass in any function, but not really, not any function. And you might've noticed this already, but we've got this glaring problem here, which is that we only can pass in functions that don't take any arguments. And that's a problem because most functions take arguments. Like for example, just this simple greeting function takes one argument. We couldn't do this. We couldn't, this function wouldn't work with the create greeting function. In fact, if we were to try this, pass that in without the parentheses and we run this, we get an error. Uh, it says invalid call to the node 3D uh, expected one argument. Exactly. So what do we do here? So one option is that if we really wanted to profile this create greeting function, we could make another function, create uh, gym greeting. And this one will have no arguments. And we'll just call create greeting, passing in Jim. And then if we wanted to profile this function, we can kind of like 
do it this way by basically passing in this create gym greeting. This is a no argument function. We can run this. And yeah, as we can see, like this function super fast. So it runs in zero milliseconds. But this is kind of a pain in the butt to do every time we want to profile a new function. We have to make like a no argument version of it. So what do we do? So this is where Lambda functions come in and they're super useful. A Lambda function is just an anonymous function. So where we say, well, actually, let's leave this create gym greeting example. And instead of create gym greeting, taking this as an argument, we're going to type func colon create greeting, passing in gym. And as you can see, the red line goes away and we'll restart this, run this, and we can see it works, no errors. So what we did here is just in line, we defined a function and then in that function, we call create greeting. And I know this might be confusing because you're thinking, okay, earlier in the clip, you said that we can't put parentheses here like this, that would be calling the function, but we're not calling the function. We're defining a new function that when called, calls this function. I know it's a mouthful, but the key here is that this is basically exactly the same thing as the create gym greeting function. It's the exact same thing. It's just anonymous. It doesn't have a name. It's a Lambda function. So this is basically a drop in replacement for create gym greeting. They're the exact same thing. And notice that create gym greeting, it doesn't have the parentheses here. You can think of this as basically a function without parentheses. In fact, just to illustrate this a little bit more, let's uh, take this and paste it in a new print statement. And what happens when we print this? It's going to print anonymous Lambda. So like I said, this is an anonymous Lambda function. Uh, so it's not printing hello Jim exclamation mark. It's not printing the result of calling this function. It's printing a function object because we haven't called this function yet. If I were to wrap this in a dot call, well, this is going to return null because this function doesn't return anything. Actually, it's just calling this create greeting function and not return anything. So this is going to return null, but you'll see the point. Then it returns null. We could actually return uh, create greeting Jim. And then uh, that will uh, call this hello Jim thing. But that's only if we call this dot call thing, uh, which if we don't do that, it just returns the anonymous lambda. Okay, so let's tie this all together now. So we've got this function, count to big number. I'm gonna refactor it to take in a number as an argument. And then we'll just change this to be number here. That way it basically just counts to the number at, that it takes in as input. In fact, we can just change it to count to number. Um, and yeah, it would be interesting to see how this function, how long it takes with different numbers as input. So let's delete all this and we'll say print, uh, what's this function called? Get function runtime, get function runtime, func, count a number, we'll say thousand, copy that, 100,000. And then we'll do oops, a million. And we'll run that. And as you can see, we've got three different runtimes here. And we basically just effectively profiled this function count to number with three different sets of inputs without ever having to define, you know, more wrapper functions. I mean, you could call these lambdas wrapper functions, but they're nice, clean one liners and get this. We didn't have to change this. This still is just this git function runtime just takes in a no argument callable and calls it. And yet we can use anonymous functions to wrap our functions and pass in our, whatever arguments we want and turn our function with arguments into a no argument callable.
Okay, so now hopefully you have a pretty good understanding of callables. And now for the last part of this tutorial, I'm just going to show you some practical scenarios for how we use callables in conjunction with signals and uh, a few other things just to show you kind of how useful these really are. So you may have heard of signals in Godot. They're super powerful. One node that emits a signal that you'll use all the time is a timer. So we'll say var timer equals timer dot new. Then I'll set some variables on it. I'll say uh, timer dot set wait time one second timer dot set one shot false. This just makes it repeat. And then I'm going to say timer dot connect and it emits a timeout signal. And what we do is, is when that signal happens, we want to run a function or a callable. So we have to specify a callable here. So I'm going to put in an anonymous function and we'll say print create greeting. Um, we'll do a different one. Say bloggers. Okay. Uh, we have to add the timer to our tree. So we'll say add child timer. And then we're going to say timer dot start. And what this basically does is it uh, runs our create greeting function every second. So if we run this, you can see now we're running it every second. And this is actually kind of a super useful series of things here. So we could actually create a function for this. So we could say func run periodically. Function, we'll say period. And we'll just copy and paste this. Instead of this, I'm going to say function. And instead of this one second, we'll say period. And yeah, we can say now run periodically. The function will be func print great greeting. Largus period will be one second. And that effectively recreates that same thing, but extracted to a helper function. And this right here is a super useful function. In fact, to make it more useful, we can just uh, create a new script. I'm just going to call it util. Let's say uh, class name util. And then I'm, I'm, I'm just going to create this function in util. Make it static. I'll give it one more argument. We'll call it parent. Because we don't have this add child here. So parent will be a node 3D. Function will be a callable. Uh, and we'll say parent.addChild. So this will say util.run periodically. Self. And this will work exactly the same way. And so what we've effectively done here is we've created the unity invoke repeating function, which Godot doesn't really have this equivalent. And but we just recreated it here, basically the exact same API. And this is endlessly useful. I mean, you can picture you have a game where you want to spawn enemies or something like that every 10 seconds. Or maybe you want to have a door open and close every second. You could just create this run periodically function and then pass any function you want in here. And it's going to run that function, you know, periodically. Really quick, if uh, this part confused you a little bit, like for example, this static function, let me know in the comments and I'll make a separate video on it. But for now, I'm going to move on to the last part of this video, which is using callables to basically modify arrays. So I'm going to create an array here. I'm going to say var array, give it a type, equals, we'll just say one, two, three, four, five. And what you may have seen in other tutorials or in documentation is that you can do something called array mapping. Uh, so I'll create an array two. 
and I can call this array.map function. Uh, and as you can see, it takes one argument, which is a callable. And this callable that you're passing in is basically going to be called on every single element in the array. So if we, uh, let's see here, let's, uh, let's create another function. We're going to call it double, let's say double X and we're just going to return X times two. And we can just pass in this double function directly into here. And this function is going to get called with one as an input and then two as an input and then three is an input and then four is an input as five an input and it returns the new value and it puts that in a new array. So if we say array two is equal to array map and then we use this function and then print array two, then we can see it prints two, four, six, eight, ten. Oh, and our code is still printing this thing every second here. Let's, let's get rid of that. So because of your knowledge of callables, this should make sense, hopefully, that you know we're running this function on every single element in the array. We're not calling this function right away. Like if we were to do this, this wouldn't work. Uh, you know, First of all, what will we even pass in? But it works when we just pass in the function itself. This doesn't have to be a predefined function. We can do this, func, we're taking a one argument anonymous function, and then we return x times two. And then we can just get rid of our double function. And this does effectively the same thing. There are other functions just like map. So what map does is it literally takes in this mapping function and it maps these values to new values, basically using this function. Uh, there are other functional methods like this. So there's array.filter which instead of a mapping function, takes a function that would filter this down. So again, I think it's easier when you have this thing. So we'll say is, we'll say func is even x turn x module to zero. Um, and then yeah, we could say is even here. Whoops, no parentheses. And then we'll see what this returns. And you can see it only returns the even numbers. Uh, again, we don't have to predefine this. If we only wanted the even numbers, then we could just pass in a single argument, anonymous function, and do the exact same thing. Two, zero. We got to turn that. We can just delete this because it's no longer relevant. And it does the same thing. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention because this is becoming super common, these types of functions. They're in JavaScript, Python, Godot, and uh, you're gonna be seeing these in all sorts of tutorials. But they basically work by using a callable that is called on every single element in the array. Okay, and that uh, concludes everything I wanna talk about for this video. If you liked this deep dive and you want me to do more deep dives, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, please give this video a like and definitely subscribe if you want more videos. Thanks.